a nonsense. I just cut it straight to the chase, black and white, boom, boom. This is what everybody on the planet needs to know. Whatever your crazy beliefs are on that metaphysics, whatever you want to worship, that's fine up to you. All I care about is the word you and how it works in court. That's how they get joined up. It's that simple. It's plural. Google a damn thing. Wikipedia the damn thing. That's why I keep using the word use. And so what I'm saying is the way I write the word I, it's funny. I have people calling me now and writing to me as they call. You know, when I see something written now with an uppercase I, I stop and I correct the person that they're doing it wrong, <laughs> or I laugh. I was like, yes, when I, when I read, I watched a movie with my sister the other day. I was reading a, what they call a closed caption, and they kept using the uppercase I. I was like, well, that person's a slave, and that person has no control over his jurisdiction, over his authority, over his person, over his body. He's claiming that he's a dead entity. And I look at the word I, and if it's capitalized, I just start laughing now. And when I see the word you, I understand that's plural. So all I'm trying to do is get people to understand what the word I means, and when you look at it, you're going to laugh. When you see the word you, and the judge is using it against you, you're going to laugh. When you see the word my and property, it's like, what? That's, that's redundant. That's, that's the same thing. Property is only what I could claim. Nobody else could claim. What I claim is property. Property is exclusive to I. So why is it my property it's saying my, my, or property, property? That's ridiculous. That's why when you guys see me do my property, I put it in a four corner rule because the court clerks, for some reason, whenever I say trespass upon property, they think they do one of those sick, you know, SIC, they, they insert the word my property. And that's ridiculous, a court clerk, but I'm not here to explain to the court clerk. So you know what I do from now on? I just do the four corner bracket my for their benefit, not for my benefit, because the judges know what I'm doing, but the court clerks don't know what I'm doing. And that's why that little guy came off from Indiana uh, a couple weeks ago and said, man, calls it. the judge said, oh boy, the judge said, this is good, this is really good. He said, I haven't seen something like this in about 20 years. You remember old man, like, old man Bob came in here with something like this like 20 years ago? I haven't seen this in 20 years. Oh, this is really good. Oh, this is really good. Oh, this guy's a player. Whoever wrote this, oh, he's a player. And that's all this is to these people. It's a game. It's a puzzle. It's a riddle. So when people, somebody, Canadians are really freaking smart, I'm telling you. They can write me all the time. They say, hey, Carl, uh, I noticed the way you use this word out of context a couple of times, and it kind of sounded retarded. And I actually Googled it, and it's like, holy crap, you're using it perfectly. I said, yes. I said, it's a riddle. It's a puzzle. And I talk in riddles, and I talk in puzzles. And eventually, I explained to everybody, a little bit at a time, what the word I means, or man means, or they means. It's going to take a little while. I can't just dump it on you guys all in one shot and just expect you guys to know how to read these ridiculous riddles. They're so simple and scary. Everything I do is one sentence, two sentences, because the words say so much. The little tiny words mean so much and scary. But everybody was taught in school, if you say the three, four, five syllable words, you get the gold star. And the smiley face, the teacher says, oh, write a thesis, man, of 10,000 pages. Or to be a professor, you got to write... 3,000 pages or something like that. Einstein wrote e equals MC squared. He was a rock star. He was the most famous man in the world at that time. Around the globe, e equals MC squared. He didn't have a 10,000 page thesis. He had e equals MC squared. And that's all I'm trying to say to you folks. And when I say this, look at I, a man. There you go. I'm done. What? I, a man. I claim. Boom. I'm done. I claim what? Whatever the hell I want. Whatever the hell I wish. Whatever the hell I require. It's simple, and they know it, and it's deadly. And that's what what's, uh, Larry got on earlier, and he said, he's the one who told me, he says, man, the feds are looking for all this big, fancy paperwork, and I'm not giving it to them. And when I read saw my stuff, they said, what's this? This is what they're afraid of? It's four senses. This is ridiculous. It's like, like Fred Flintstone. It's like third grade, and third grade, if I understand, it's like, yes, but you understand what that word really means. So I sat in the U.S. Marshal's office for an hour or two and explained them that four sentences. And they're like, holy crap, this is like genius. I said, yes, it's your words. It's so simple and scary, isn't it? They're like, wow, now we see why they're so scared. I said, yes, thank you. It sounds retarded. It's so simple and so scary. I said, I'm not bombarding the court with 10,000 documents. It's one page, man. I put it like in 20-some font to make it fill up the page because it looks so ridiculous how tiny it is. <laughs> you know, something like, oh, 
okay, yeah, it is kind of different. <laughs> it's like, it's, that's all I claim. I make a claim. I claim I found gold. I found it over here. Anybody else wants to make the claim that my claim is a false claim? Let me know when I'll share the claim. Or I'll give it up and I'll give it to you. Maybe you are the rightful possessor of this gold. Maybe I am in the wrong. Maybe we could share. Whatever. Simple claims. I believe you did me wrong. And that's why I say to people, you finish it on the administrative side. You, you see, like, that's what I'm doing with this man in Indiana, with the IRS. And it's driving them effing nuts. And this man's afraid in Indiana that they're not going to let us finish the administrative process, that they're going to just run his ass straight into the courthouse. And say, look, before this guy can finish up anything else on the administrative side, man, we're going to have to slam this guy down. Because he's asking us questions. And we have to answer his questions. We're the one who's the plaintiff. We have to say, tell him what is the nature of his wrong. Okay, that's the nature. Now, define what the wrong is. Can you please explain it in, in detail what I did wrong? And right now, I guarantee you, they cannot say wrong. Because this is what I said to this man. He keeps saying to me all the time, crime. I said, what the word is crime? It's some sort of legalese, godly gook word. There's no such thing. It's like, you either did wrong or you didn't do wrong. Wrong is the worst thing you could say to somebody in a court. You say to the judge, judge, I believe you're committing a crime. He'd be like, eh. You say to the judge, hey, you know what? You're doing wrong. That judge is going to explode. That's the worst thing you could say because there's no excuse for doing something wrong. Because you know what the right thing is to do. And to do a wrong means you know what is right. And you're disregarding the fact that you know the difference between right and wrong. And you choose to do wrong. So, all I keep saying is like, and I say, you know, who's, who's claiming I committed a crime? No. Who say I do wrong? There you go. It sounds like retarded. Who say I do wrong? It's like, boy, that, that doesn't even sound like, like, no, well, it's present tense. Who's making a claim right now, today, this moment, at this time? Not in the past, right now. You say I do wrong? Yes or no? So see, that's what I'm trying to say, man. I make things really simple for the people. And then if they say, yes, we claim that you do wrong, okay, which of the you? I, the man, am doing wrong, or I, the taxpayer, or I, the person who filed that 1040 form? Who are you claiming did the wrong? The tax filer or the man? And there you go. I'm trying to show him we're going to separate the two. We're going to separate him as the tax filer or him as the man. Which one does the IRS, the United States of America, want to go after? Because he is a man, he's like the bondsman. He is holding the bond for the defendant. Or like you like you are like the child. You're holding the liability of your child. Your child throws the rock through the windows. Obviously, they're going to come to you. Just like back in the, you watch the I Love Lucy shows, Lucy Ricardo did something wrong. They always went after Ricky because Ricky was the one liable. And Ricky would go freaking nuts. He's like, not again. I got to fail you out again. Lucy, when are you going to stop your nonsense? This is costing me big bucks. Wasting my time? Can you just cut your crap? And that's the same thing when you say the word you. You got to say, if you don't want to be joined, separate yourselves, man, because you got a common law country where you can say, woof, you know, you want anything from me, the man, you let me know. But as the defendant, you know what? I'm sorry what the, my defendant did to you. I'm sorry what my I love Lucy lady did to you. But you know what? Honestly, I'm not liable. You want her, you go after her. But I, as the man, you better leave me alone. I'll make a claim that I, the man, actually did a wrong to another man. Well, then I'll uh, compensate. I'll be more than glad to settle the matter. I'll be more than glad to write out a paycheck, write, I'll write out a check right now to anybody who's claiming I did wrong. Please make a state claim. And the government can't make a claim, especially against a man. That's ridiculous. That's why my stuff is so simple, because I could only deal with, like, credit cards, mortgage companies, governments. I can't deal with another man on man. None of my nonsense works when it's a man on another man. You do another man wrong, figure out a way to pay him back. Some husband and wife called me up and they said my son's in jail. I said, did you do somebody wrong? He's like, what? Did he hurt somebody? Yeah. I said, well, then I hope he sits in jail and rots. I said, because if you folks as parents don't know, the law of this land, I'm not going to explain it to you. All he basically had to do was to beg for forgiveness and say that he was sorry. But if his parents didn't even know that, he certainly doesn't know, and he belongs in jail. Because he'll come out thinking that he could just run around and hurt people and say, Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Ray. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, oh, I'm... No. 
No, forget that, man. People like that need to sit in jail and uh, get the hell away from the rest of society. But all I do has to do with any kind of uh, anything other than a self-governing entity, like I'm a self-governing entity, or uh, like a corporation other than uh, flesh and, you know, like a, like a man. Man, I'm a corporation. Uh, I'm embodied, you know, because my mom and dad joined together in intercourse and in the commerce, and uh, commerce and intercourse is basically the same word. And I'm the product of my mother and father. Am my corporation? Yes, I'm whole and complete. So, like I said, if you want to play cute with the words, sure. We go all day and play cute with the words, but that's why I make my stuff short and sweet. Did I do wrong? Yes or no? Well, no, I didn't do wrong, but you did wrong. Oh, so you're trying to join me with uh, that fictional entity. Huh? Is that what you're trying to do? The, the tax file? Is that what you're trying to get joined or over me, Judge? Because I, a man, did I do wrong? Yes or no? And Judge will say, well, absolutely not. You came right, I did. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you guys wake up and you see this stuff, you'll say, no, I see why Paul's laughing all the time, why the judges laugh at us all the time, too. They say, you've got to go get an attorney, Sonny, before you go get yourself hurt. <laughs> and you guys got beautiful paperwork, you know, all this shit inside and out, and the judge just gets you on a simple word like you. And you're like, that bastard, that psychopath, <laughs> he's evil. No, he's not. He just, he, you know, he's like you're dealing with your mom or your dad when you were a little kid when you're three, four years old. He's already got jurisdiction control over you. Either he wants to hear your bullshit or he doesn't want to hear your bullshit today. It's like, you know what, well, how come he let that lady go and that's when he did it? Well, he's like your mom and dad. Mom had some kids that she liked and she knew that you were going to be a pain in the ass, so she came down hard on you, then she came down on the other kids. How did he get jurisdiction on me? He just asked you. Is this you? Are you Bob? Are you Susie? And he said, yeah. I said, well, there you go. Now I got jurisdiction over you. Now I'm going to either want to hear your nonsense or not hear your nonsense. So, I mean, their job is so simple. I told you guys, my buddy, when he won, when he was elected to being a judge in Alabama, he said, he said, oh, Carl, going to be able to hang out with you, bullshit with you for the next uh, couple of days. I got to go to judge school. He gets elected to being judge like you could be elected to being judge in your little county. And uh, he had to spend four days at the state capitol to learn how to be a judge. And you know these guys probably just, uh, you know, stood stood around for two or three days just laughing and joking and, you know, getting to meet and greet each other. And maybe one day they sat around and actually talked to each other how to be a judge. And they just used simple little stuff like I said. Like we said, well, you, you know, how do we get jurisdiction? Well, just ask the man, is this you? Here, the defendant, are you here? Yes, okay, well, good. I got jurisdiction control over you. Anything you do is contempt the court. I could hold you there for the rest of your life. Ha uh ha. -huh. It's like, wow, being a judge is fun. Yeah, it's simple, too. <laughs> they don't go to law school for five, six, seven years, learn how to be a judge. They go to the state capitol for two, three days, four days. Well, my buddy went for four days. Learn how to be a judge. So what, you think these guys are doing rocket science? You think they're doing Hale versus Hinkle? You think they're sitting around for four days reading the Constitution? Oh, come on now. They're just learning how to get the tricks, how to get jurisdiction, which means control over you. That's all jurisdiction means is control. How do we control this guy? Well, just like mom and dad control you. All they say is, hey, you're my kid? Yeah, I got control over you, the defendant? Yeah, the judge has control over the defendant and the plaintiff. There you go. He's already established the rules. He's mommy, he's daddy. And that's it, you're the little kid. It's simple. <laughs>